What's going on YouTube? So today we're going to be working on my dad's OBS truck. Um, finishing up the exhaust. As you can see, I am suited up for some welding. Well, I think it's safe to say we can conclude that neither of us are welders, but a grinder will clean up what a welder can't do. So, with that being said, we can adore this finished exhaust. As you can see here, we got the entire thing done all the way back. All the joints are welded. As you can see, the welded joints have a high temp coating on them because the welds are not uh, stainless. They are just regular steel. I don't remember what uh, wire is in the welder, but they will rust. So those are coated. Uh, these ugly welds are ground down. So they're still not pretty, but they're not as ugly as they were. Like I said, all of the joints are coated. The mufflers were sandblasted and coated, and then after they were sandblasted and coated, they were welded together with a hanger here and then hung with the factory hanger location up here. So with that, they reduced down to two and a half inch, and then they go out the back individually on each side. So you can see here's the driver side and the passenger side. Now, the cool thing about this is they're not like wheelbarrow handles. I have a, a severe hate for exhausts that exit directly out the back of the vehicle. I think it is, I think it's super ugly if I'm being totally honest with you. But these, these look pretty good. They're not exited out of the vehicle or right outside of the back. They actually dump right before the back of the bumper. So it's super low profile and it looks really good. We got the driver's side here. And then we got the passenger side here. So with that, we had to do a hanger that bolts to the frame. As you can see, there's a rubber isolator here to keep it from vibrating. Uh, this exhaust is extremely solid. There is not any shake in it really at all, which is great. So it's not going to rattle, but looks super good. Hopefully it stays as nice as it looks right now. But with the exhaust being done, we can drop the truck back down onto the ground and start wrapping up the rest of the motor stuff and get the tune started. So for the last couple weekends, I uh, repinned the PCM connectors and that was about two weekends ago, I believe. Last weekend, I got into the coil wiring. Um, these are coil harnesses off an LS1 and uh, didn't exactly lay right in place nicely. Uh, I did have to peel back the factory tape which was all crusty and old uh, not a lot of flexibility there and um, extended actually the coil for cylinder number two here um, it wasn't quite long enough so I got them to lay out in a, in a way that I am happy with uh, the throttle body lays across right here so this guy's got to be tucked down so this harness is beneath the coils on the uh, on the passenger side bank, while on the driver's side bank, it runs up on top. There's nothing to stop it from laying here. There's no throttle body or anything getting in the way. 
um, and it just laid out better that way. So whether that's janky or not, I don't know. Don't really care. It's how I'm doing it. Uh, seven wires from each of these guys. Uh, as I mentioned, from, from this connector toward the coils is an old harness from an LS1. Uh, factory stuff. I could have ordered aftermarket uh, harnesses, but after reading some reviews, they're, there's some problems with them. Uh, obviously made overseas and just not the best quality. So uh, if I really don't like the way these look, I can make my own in the future with the female side connector and get myself four coil connectors and make my own harness and make it look all pretty. But for now, um, this is going to work for me. So from the female, or from, I'm sorry, from the male side of this connector on each side, on each side, I had purchased a pigtail. I think I specified I wanted it five feet long from here, all the way wrapped around into the PCM. Not necessarily for this side, but for this side, because it's longer, it's got to go farther distance. So those I got from EFI Connection and uh, they, uh, they make them and send them out, which is nice because it's, like I said, uh, the import stuff is not always awesome. This is not import stuff. I believe this is a gentleman in Florida who, uh, who runs that site and runs that business. So five wires from this side, five wires from this side, come back to the factory harness and run all the way back to the PCM. That's this bundle right here. This is 10 wires. Um, there's one wire, trigger wire for each coil on, each, on uh, both sides. And then there's a low reference wire for, for the bank number one, low reference wire for bank number two. So run back to the factory harness and I peeled back the corrugated tubing. Well, tried to peel it back, most of it broke. So pretty much replaced it from about where this splice is. Maybe I went a little farther, don't remember. Um, to down here and all of this guy here up to this point is is new i had some of that stuff in the basement um so I just used what i had and replaced it because it was just breaking cracking chipping falling apart yes i had these these intake ports covered while i was doing all that work um obviously to keep any kind of junk from falling down in there so the, the power wire from each bank of coils and the ground wire from each bank of coils are tied back in here. This is where the original ignition coil and ignition module wiring came out of the harness. So I peeled that back, uh, you know, had everything tape pulled off that harness, everything exposed and pulled those wires back, tied them in. Um, I use parallel butt connectors when I do stuff like this, this was actually uh, something that Mike Finnegan had uh, had shown in, in one of his videos. Um, it's kind of like a butt connector, but a butt connector, you're, you're shoving a wire in from either side and the wires aren't actually touching. These parallel connectors, the wires overlap. So as they run through, if I can hold the camera here and do this. Uh, not really. So as they run through, one will come in here, the other comes in from the other side, and they are actually overlapped. The wires are overlapping, and then the crimp connection is made. Why did I not solder? Well, I read something from Painless Performance, who builds wire harnesses, painless wiring. Uh, they don't solder their connections. I believe I, they said something about the uh, wire insulation with the heat making it brittle. Um, they feel that connection is not really... Uh, I don't know, a very strong connection, I guess. Uh, the solder joint is, but I believe it's the wire at each end of the solder joint that they don't really like. So I picked up on that, I'm using that, and the heat shrink tubing that I use oozes out some, some glue whenever it's, whenever it's heated up and shrunk. Heated up, but not heated up like solder. So yes, it's heated up, but not quite to the temperature that it's going to make the wire insulation brittle. And when this stuff shrinks up and it oozes out the glue out of the end, I'm confident that it's sealed up. So that's what I use. Not all heat shrink tubing has the glue in there. This stuff, I made sure when I ordered it, it does. Um, within this harness, I also eliminated what was right about here, which were the 
EGR and uh, EVAP solenoid connectors and harness. So trim that back, terminated those guys within the harness and uh, this truck in the state of Indiana has a high enough GVW and also because of its age, uh, it wouldn't need emissions testing if I didn't want to do it because of its age and it doesn't need emissions testing um, because of the GVW on it. I believe it's a 9100 GVW or something like that. So I don't necessarily, uh, you can call me a thug or a, or a piece of garbage for killing the atmosphere if you want to and I'm okay with that. But uh, this is my EGR block off plate that I made. So I no longer have that. I no longer have hot exhaust gases recirculating back through my engine. I would prefer to have the coolest, cleanest air charge that I can. So happy with that. And this was where the purge solenoid was. Uh, there was a steel tube that, that fed eh, maybe four or five inches into the intake, um, drove that guy out and then just pipe tapped this guy and put a 3 8 pipe plug in it. So done with you, done with you. And that's how we're gonna roll with that. This rat nest here of terminal connectors and uh, and the two, you know, terminal one, or uh, connector one, connector two, the blue and the red. Um, wiring looks pretty gnarly, but uh, honestly, I mean, they don't lay out to where they're all you know, nice, like the, the coil wires here. Uh, this is just kind of how they went together. Um, I think I'm going to have to extend one or two of the wires out of the blue connector here because it's, it's a little bit tight. Red connector seems okay. It's got plenty of length and the PCM should lay here where the, uh, where the stock one did. That should be good. Uh, I have not put the terminal covers back on here. The, you know, the corresponding blue cover and red cover. Uh, I just haven't yet. They're laying on the workbench, but they're ready to go on. Um, I will tape this stuff up. I will tidy this up after I know that everything fires up and runs and uh, it's good to go. This wire right here. This this is a, uh, <laughs> I don't know, an anomaly maybe. If, if this truck had dual tanks, this wire would have been used. This wire was designated in the uh in the wiring breakout that i got from lex tech um and so i had it inserted in in the red connector where it was supposed to be terminal 60 um terminal terminal uh, location 60. so when i went to do the coil near plug conversion which the instructions from lex tech say to do the 411 swap first which i did and then do the coil near plug ignition swap which i then did and as I'm inserting all my terminals into, uh, into my connectors here, I realize that connector or uh, terminal location uh, 60, and I believe this is C1, whatever it is, C1 or C2, it's the red connector. Uh, terminal 60 already had this wire in there. So that kind of confused me because I was supposed to use terminal 60 for my low reference for one of these brown wires here. Uh, that was low reference for bank one ignition coils. So I peeled out the factory um, service manual because I've got a set of service manuals for this truck, GM service manuals, which uh, I have some, some uh, experience with those from when I worked at a, a GMC and Oldsmobile dealer in the mid 1990s. Um, yes, I'm a dinosaur and we use service manuals. We didn't use the internet. We didn't have the internet. So service manuals are very handy. They've got the wiring diagrams in there. All the pinouts are in there. Um, I was able to find that this was originally for a, uh, its location in the old connectors was for a, uh, a fuel tank switch for uh, a fuel tank module, uh, switch module, whatever they called it. This was for a vehicle that, that was equipped with dual gas tanks. This truck is not equipped with dual gas tanks. This, I assume, is a dummy circuit that is likely terminated somewhere back in the harness by the fuel tank. So I am leaving this here. I'm not taping it back and, and uh, shrink wrapping the end of it until I know that the truck fires up, runs, has no issues. And I, I mean, it's, I'm 99.999% sure this is not gonna be necessary. 
but I'm gonna leave it here until I know. So once I've got, uh, got this thing fired up and I know that I don't have to repin anything, I actually have the wires in the right spots, uh, I'll get this cleaned up, it'll get tidied up and tied back. Um, I've also got to, uh, the truck has dual batteries in it, which it did not come from the factory with. I can tell that because of the way some things are done here. There's a uh, aftermarket, looks like a, a Ford starter solenoid mounted down here for some reason. I don't, I, I haven't dug into the, the reason for that. Um, I believe it was something to do with RV wiring. Uh, this truck pretty much just towed an RV as far as I know. It had a six pin connector on it. And with the amount of low miles that were on a thousand miles a year, you, you don't really drive a truck daily and only put a thousand miles a year on it. So. I believe this was something to do with the RV. Uh, I'm gonna kind of chase those wires back and redo them in, a, in a, a typical dual battery fashion where both of the positive posts are going to uh, merge in the same place and then the grounds will tie together as well. So I've got, you know, true dual battery system hooked up the way it's supposed to be instead of, uh, you know, I've got this little blue, I don't know, 10 gauge wire coming off of here. And then there's a 10 gauge ground that was that was off of this battery. So 10 gauge is not gonna is not gonna get it done when you're doing the uh, using the amperage that a, a starter motor um, draws on a you know on a cold start or something like that. So th this was obviously not a typical dual battery setup. It was just something else. So anyway, today's plans will be get that upper intake installed get everything wired up on it and get some front accessories on here. I would like to get the radiator dropped in, uh, which all my junk is laying over here currently. Get the radiator dropped in, get the uh, um, trans cooler lines, oil cooler lines hooked back up, get some coolant in it and at least get ready to start it. And then I will, dig into the tuning, which I am seriously avoiding doing because it's learning something that I have no clue how to do. So uh, I'm basically just avoiding it. But anyway, put all this stuff together today and unfortunately get to the point where I'm gonna have to learn to tune.